This is not a tuba, and this is not a mellophone. This is neither a piccolo trombone nor a slide trumpet. This is a trumpet. Ah, c'est pas une trompette, c'est une vidéo d'une trompette, n'est-ce pas? Yeah, yeah, whatever, Monsieur Magritte. In this video, I'm going to show you the brass instruments I use to record my arrangements, and also how I make this flugelhorn, which is what it is, sound like a tuba. Welcome to the Seb Skelly School of Sound and Stuff. <laughs> Of course, this video wouldn't feel right without some sort of brass arrangement, so I've arranged that theme tune for Brass Quintet, sheet music available for free in the description. First up, let's do a quick gear rundown, as it's requested a lot. The main event and my day-to-day -day workhorse is a Barkstrad Model 37, medium large bore, pretty standard. I've had this beauty for probably 12 or 13 years now. It's battered to oblivion, but still plays like a dream. Check out these battle scars from all them outdoor gigs and festivals and probably a few slightly too hot baths. Get yourself a solid repair person is my advice. Next up, my flugelhorn. Love this instrument. It's got such a lovely warm sound and makes a great fake tuba, though more on that in a bit. It's a Yamaha Custom Z with a Bobby Shoe mouthpiece, though I'm not much of a mouthpiece guy. This one just came with it and it works for me. Now this is a fun one. It's a soprano trombone, not a slide trumpet. Check out Trent Hamilton's video on the difference between the two. He explains it pretty well. I think mine's also the same model as his or similar. It's a Jupiter SST314. This crusty old geezer is not a mellophone nor a flugel, but a solo horn, apparently. Again, Trent Hamilton has a great video on this instrument. I think he's even got the exact same model, even though there's no actual model number on it. All it says is La Fleur imported by Boozy and Hawks London and a serial number. They're fairly rare, I guess. I picked this one up super cheap at my local music shop where it had been sat in the window for years and years and years looking sad and lonely and in need of an owner. It's basically just a forward facing tenor horn, so it's pitched in E flat. The intonation is atrocious, but it sounds quite cool and auto-tune is always an option. Finally, this little fella has appeared in a few videos here and there. It's my E flat and D trumpet. You can change the key by swapping out all the tuning slides. This is in D currently. It's a John Packer 157 and it does the job pretty well, though it is tarnished as anything and makes my hands smell of cheese, so I should probably polish it at some point. For all my trumpets and the trombone, I use a Bach 3C mouthpiece, sometimes a one and a quarter C, but mostly the 3C. Again, I'm not much of a mouthpiece person though, so it does the job just fine. Now onto the fake tubers and trombones, the part you've all been waiting for. But first, it's time for a story. It all started with a load of brass arrangements I did for an ensemble back at uni. We performed on and off while I was there, but when I left, I had all these arrangements but no proper recordings of them. Now, I don't play the tuba, nor do I own one, and it's the same deal with the trombone, but I came up with a solution. Are you ready for a Seb Skelly pseudoscience session? Sorry. The inside of the pipe that a brass instrument is made from is called the bore, and there are two main shapes that are used, cylindrical and conical. Trumpets and trombones have cylindrical bores, meaning that the pipe remains the same width throughout most of the instrument until the bell section at the end. Flugelhorns and tubers, on the other hand, have conical bores, meaning that the pipe constantly increases in width from the start to finish. Cylindrical bores tend to sound slightly raspier, whereas conical bores are more mellow and rounded sounding. And this is my theory behind why my fake tuba works so well. A tuba is basically just a massive flugelhorn, right? I mean, look at them, they're both the same conical bore, both in B flat, both same thick and warm sound. You get the idea. There's a plugin in Logic Pro, which is the software I use to record, called the Vocal Transformer. It has two controls, pitch and formant. Here's the bass line from the theme tune earlier, as it originally sounds when recorded on the flugelhorn. Now, by my logic, a B flat tuba is two octaves lower than a flugelhorn. So here's that same bass line again, this time pitch shifted down two octaves using the pitch control of the vocal transformer. As you can hear, it's definitely low enough, but the tone is not right at all. It's too tinny and buzzy and not at all the nice warm, rich sound of a tuba. And this is where the formant control comes in. There's a load of technical acoustics, sciencey stuff behind this, but all we need to know for our purposes is that the formant control changes how big or small something sounds. And if we're saying that a B-flat tuba is two octaves lower than a flugelhorn, we need to make it sound two octaves bigger as well, like so. Et voilà, 
along with some other effects like compression, EQ, sometimes a bass amp modeler just to beef up the low end a little bit. That is how I create my fake tuba. It's the same principle for the trombone, just down one octave. And if you've seen any of my deck tech videos where there's a euphonium, it's the same principle again, but down one octave on the flugelhorn, same ball, same stuff like that. It doesn't work quite as well. I'm still not entirely convinced by it and it takes a bit of tweaking just to get it sounding okay. But for the most part, it works. I've also tested it on saxophones and it seems to work pretty well with a little bit of tweaking of the formant and some clever EQ, but give it a go. Whatever family of instruments you're playing, you might be able to play the entire range of that family. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, found it useful, found it interesting, has cleared up a few things, all that stuff. This is the first video in hopefully an ongoing series, which might be slightly infrequent, of more brass and music related stuff. I've got some other videos planned which will come out at some point. In the meantime, if there's any things that you might like me to touch on at a later date, Drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do. And as the old saying goes, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I have a Patreon and you can follow me on Instagram. Bye.